Hey, it's me, and welcome to another episode of Cooking with Jack. Today's episode, we're cooking spicy tuna fish cakes, so you want to gather up all your ingredients. You'll need 250 grams of floury potatoes, such as Maris Piper or King Edwards. I'm using Bartlett Rooster, because that's all we had. 400 grams of canned tuna, preferably flaked. 50 grams of cheddar cheese. Four spring onions. One small garlic clove. Dried thyme. One small egg. Some cayenne pepper. Salt and pepper. Flour. And vegetable oil. I didn't have any vegetable oil, so I'm using sunflower oil. The first thing you want to do is peel and dice your potato. So get peeling. As you can see, I'm actually using a peeler this time rather than a knife because I think all our knives are in the wash. So I'm using this peeler at the moment. It's actually not that bad. The first uh, potato that I did went quite well. Apart from the, the peelings just stay in the blade, so you've got to keep taking them out. And then once it's all peeled, you want to get rid of all your peelings, put them in the compost, and you want to dice your potato. So cut it in half, cut it into quarters, cut it into eighths, cut it into sixteenths. And you want about that sort of size chunks. And add those to your existing potatoes and do the rest of it. And you want to add all of those into a saucepan and boil them for 10 minutes. While that's happening, you want to grate your cheese. And I'm doing it on the smallest guide. I don't like grating. We've got a blue grater that makes it a lot easier. It's like a tub. And so if you don't use all of it, you can keep it in the fridge. And it's got a lid, and then it's got a removable uh, grater plate, which you can put the whole lot into the dishwasher, which is very handy. I'm using extra strong cheddar cheese, because I like strong cheese. Well, I like strong cheddar. And I'm not really keen on goat's cheese or soft cheeses, but there are a few that I like. So then once that's grated, you just chuck the lumps in there as well. And then you want to finely chop your spring onion. With the spring onion, if there are any dangly bits, as you can see there, you want to take those off because they won't taste very nice. So just peel them off and then chop the top off. So it's nice and fresh. Actually, I'm going to pull that bit off as well because that's a bit dry. And then chop about where it begins to go white on the bottom there. And chuck that in your discard pile. And then start chopping. This is finely chopped. I'm not really sure how you can finely chop a spring onion because they're quite hard to cut. So you end up quite big circles. And you want to add that to your cheese pile and the rest of the spring onions. And crush your garlic. So as usual, chop the bottom and the top off to make it easier to peel. So I'm going to try crushing it with the side of my knife. That did not work at all, I just flattened it. That's not really the sort of impact I wanted. <laughs> no, that didn't really work very well, so I'm just going to chop that finely. And just chuck it in like that and just forget about it. I'm just going to have the lumps of garlic in there. And then you want to... Uh, beat the egg. I'm going to use a glass and a fork because that's the way that I've been taught but there are other methods. Like that and discard your eggshell and then beat your egg not your children. Now that's done you want to drain your tuna 
So I'm going to use an electric uh, can opener. Then you can use the lid of the tuna tin to help pour, uh, to help drain the tuna. Now I'm putting it into a glass because my dad drinks the, the brine from this. It's just salt water. Uh, yeah, it's just salt water. So it's actually quite nice. You should try it, it's healthy for you as well. It's got all the nutrients of the fish. And it's actually quite tasty. And then remove your lid. Yummy tuna. And put that to one side while we wait for the potatoes. And then once the potatoes are done, you want to drain them and then mash them using a masher. Or you could use a fork. A masher is the best way though. And this is how you make proper mash. You want to add the egg, beaten egg, add tuna. So this is like a lot of tuna and a lot of potato for this. At first I thought the potato didn't seem like enough. But now it seems like too much. Give it another mix around. Yep, definitely should have used the bigger pan. I've still got this to add to it. And then add the cheese and spring onions. I'm not sure this is a good idea. <laughs> oh god, what have I got myself into? When videos go wrong. Right, let's put it all into here. I don't know if this is going to be any better. Probably not by the looks of it now. This is not how I intended this to go. There's still no room for the cheese and the spring onions. <laughs> oh dear. Give it another mix around. Trying not to get it all over your kitchen. And then you want to add two teaspoons of thyme. And that's about two. And then you want to add the cayenne pepper. Now apparently you want a half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. But I don't know how well that's going to work. Yeah, I'll just put that much in. <laughs> Salt and pepper. So it's just a dash. Now from memory, this pepper comes out very quickly. So I only put a bit in. That was still quite a lot. Oh, I can smell the pepper. Lovely. Can't smell the cayenne pepper. I feel like I should put more of that in there. This has been sitting in my cupboard for so long. It's still like... It's, it won't come off at the bottom. There, <laughs> wow. That's going to be a bit of the spice. That was a lot. Mix that in. Or attempt to. If you're doing this at home, I'd suggest uh, using a bigger saucepan. And if you did want to cook this at home, the recipe is below as always. And so are my other channels. So be sure to check them out. So now you've got that all sort of mixed in. It says divide the mixture into four and make into thick burgers. Am I supposed to use my hands? Okay, let's give this a go. <laughs> oh, that doesn't feel too good. Okay, that feels better. Oh, it doesn't look too good though. So let's get, that's one burger right there. And make it into <laughs> you've got to make it into a burger shape. Bits just falling off it. It's not sticking together. I think this <laughs> this one's been a bit of a disaster. So I'm gonna give that one a go. There's one burger. That's the full burgers done, so come and join me over at the oven. So, you want to heat up your vegetable oil. And 
and it says to, shallow, to fry them in shallow oil. I don't actually know how to do that. So I'm going to give it my best attempt of how I think it should be done. So you want to coat, not coat, you want to sprinkle flour over your burgers and put them in that. Oh, ow, 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 ow. Don't chuck them in like that. You will get burnt. That is boiling hot oil. Ow. And put it, put it on for five minutes each side. Woo! <laughs> Kids, don't follow me. There we go, all safely in the pan now. So join me in five minutes. Now they've been cooking for five minutes on that side, I'm going to flip them over and hopefully they don't fall apart. Oh wow, that's a bit burnt. Yep, yeah, maybe don't leave them off for five minutes. That one's pulling the fat on the top. And I'll see you in another five minutes. Now they've been on for another five minutes, I'll put them on the plate. They look brilliant. We're only going to have two today, so I'll save the others for later. Hey, it's me, and on first taste test, they're not that nice. I think I've burnt them just a bit. I don't know if you can tell. They don't seem that cooked on the inside, though. I think I did the shallow frying wrong. I'll have to improve on that. But I don't think this is going to make my catalogue. As I said, if you want to make this recipe, it's all down there. And so are my other channels, so check those out. And join me next week when I make tuna kedigree. Talk to you later. <laughs>